Um, now, the larger view, but a view from Korea, I think. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rujin Roy, please, you have but, the floor. Well, first of all, those uh, baseball fans like me, the Dodgers just won in the 18th inning, so okay. I was gonna give, uh, sorry about you being the Red Sox fan, but uh, anyway, um, this is my third year in a row um, in being on this panel on Donald Trump, and I either did a great job or I may be the only one who said anything good about Trump, and I sus suspiciously believe it's the latter. Last year, I had to, uh, I had to fly back to Korea uh, right after my session uh, at the World Policy uh, Conference. As President Moon invited me uh, to a state dinner he was hosting for President Trump. As I was walking down the receiving line, I wondered about what should I say to the President. I got about eight seconds. So I told him, Mr. President, I like your tweets. Keep tweeting. In which he re replied, believe me, I'll be tweeting more. And I'm going to tweet one tomorrow morning, and you'll see it. And so, yes, I take part of the blame, uh, but seriously, it is his tweets that has made him different from any other presidents in the U.S. or, in, matter of fact, any other leaders in the world. And it works in America. The intellects and the press don't like it, but if you are a common American who works in a factory like mine in the Midwest, they like to hear uh, directly from uh, Trump. They don't want to read New York Times, it's too sophisticated for them. So, um, whether, you, whether, whether, he's, whether what he says is true or not, uh, they rather hear it directly from their leader instead of, instead of through, uh, through the press. And every time Trump tweets, it becomes national news and headline news. Um, and whether, whatever you said about him, whether it's kind of controversial, it, it is entertaining. And American loves entertainment. So I have uh, my own formula. I call it the 30-30-40 formula. Believe 30% of what he says, verify 30% of what he says, and don't believe 40% of anything he says. Let me now talk about how Trump negotiates. He always starts with threats. Look how he first threatened uh, about leaving NATO and how he ended up getting the NATO countries to pay more for the defense. Look at how he threatened about getting out of NAFTA. Now he has a new deal with Canada and Mexico. He threatened Korea about getting rid of a U.S.-Korea free trade agreement. Now we have a new one, which is not that much different from the original one. He just to win, wants to win and uh, put his, uh, gives his point. Look at how he threatened North Korean Kim Jong-un about striking first and how his button was bigger than his. And now he had a meeting with Kim Jong-un and now they are in a love affair, at least for the time being, according to Trump. So I'm not that worried about the trade issues the U.S. has with China. I think in the end, the Chinese will blink and I think there will be some kind of an agreement. I'm also kind of uh, cautiously optimistic that he may come back to the TTP. You know, they, at least he wants to listen and talk. So uh, those are some of the things that I think you, you have to, so don't believe anything, everything he tweets, but look at what he does in the process and, how, and what kind of action he takes. And I think that's the important fact. You don't, don't get upset and, and, and just uh, whatever, whatever when he says something stupid or crazy. Now uh, let me um, talk about the upcoming U.S. midterm elections. It's really going to be a do or die election for Donald Trump. If he wins both, if the Republicans wins, wins both the House and the Senate, he will have a very good chance of becoming a two term president. If the Republican loses the House and wins the Senate, as most people are predicting, he will be handicapped uh, with, the, with this budget. The, the, uh, he, the, the, uh, the Democrats will be controlling the budgets. One thing for sure, he won't be able to build that big wall in the border of the U.S. and Mexico if the Democrats win. If he loses both the House and the Senate, he will be in real trouble and could possibly uh, face impeachment, depending on the outcome of the Mueller uh, investigations. So for, me, so for me, it's not about whether I like Trump or not. I still believe America is the greatest country in the world. And yes, America and the world will survive Donald Trump whether it's two more years or four more years. Thank you very much. Thank you.
thank you for that note of optimism. Um, it is worth pointing out, I think you're quite right, that even Barack Obama got probably more done in his first two years when he controlled both houses of Congress than he did in the next six. And partly because he didn't control the, the, certainly the Senate, that's why the JCPOA and the Paris Agreement, none of them were put forward to the Senate. They just stayed as agreements, which is why Mr. Trump felt he could abrogate them. Um, it's very helpful, thank you. Um, I just wondered very quickly if um, you think this tactic's going to actually work with Kim Jong-un, or, or, or is this still very unclear? I can't imagine North Korea is gonna denuclearize. That seems mad for them. If you ask the same question about his father, Kim Jong-un, I would have no chance that he's going to negotiate. But with his son, I feel a little different. I think this guy has a little bit of a heart, and he actually cares about his people. So if Trump becomes a two-term president, and if he keeps threatening and doing that thing, I think there is an answer to this. So I'm one of the, those few. They, 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 they said I was crazy, but I, I, always, I, I, I am a believer that, you know, depending on how they negotiate, mm -hmm. there's could be a, there, there could be a solution. Yes, good, and, and it would help if China again turned the screw a little bit more rather than turning it back half on the other a hand, notch. I don't think, but, uh, uh, but to add, add to that, I think Kim Jong-un is also unhappy or not, can't trust the Chinese completely. That's why he's also moving with the U.S. and Korea, because he doesn't. And Kim Jong-il, his father, never trusted the Chinese, and yes. that was one thing he advised Kim Jong-un, said, don't ever trust the Chinese. So, those are some of the, no, no, no. I'm sorry I have to, to mention that to you, but no, it's not my okay. just not record, but no, that's but, what they said, so I'm, yeah, just, of course. I'm just coding. Yes, no, yeah. that's, that's one of the reasons I think he will yeah. keep nuclear weapons. Yeah. And it's I have to about go to China. China. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I have to go anyway. to China next week, so I need, to, I need the visa, so I don't, I'm not, don't please take it seriously. Well, don't have lunch with Xi Jinping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll get invited, thank you.